Good afternoon. In this video, we're going to run through how to put a box and run it down a conveyor belt. So inside the cell, the only thing I have set up is my robot, which is an R2000IC165F. And then I have my end of arm tooling, which is a default suction cup that you can find in the user tool frame folder. And I just made it a scale of one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our conveyor belt and then we're going to add a box to the top of that. The first thing we're going to do is bring in a conveyor belt. So let's go into machines. Now before in the previous video because we weren't having anything move down the actual conveyor belt we brought it in as a fixture. This time we need to bring it in as a movable object which the only thing you can actually move is under machines. So let's go under machines right click and we're going to add machine and we're going to go to CAD library. You can also go up to the cell and find your add machine CAD library. So either place you can grab those items. So we're not actually going to be in the machines. We're going to go under fixtures and then we're going to go under conveyor. Find the conveyor belt that we want to use. We're going to use the same one that we did in our previous video, which is this one right here. Hit OK. And then now we're going to bring it down to the ground. R, so 700 for the Z and let's rotate this or move it to the side down and let's make these nice nominal numbers there we go and let's also make sure that we are able to reach this so let's turn on our tool envelope there we go so we can fit and grab anything that's inside of this device. We also have just double check to make sure that we're not too close to the robot so that's not binding up. Let's turn off the U-Tool. All right, so now we have our conveyor in place. Let's now create the part in which we're going to pick up and move. So we're going to go to Cell and Add Part, and we're going to just do a simple box. Let's switch to General, and let's call this box underscore one. And let's give it a color. We can do any color we want. We can make it a brown or I would make it white in my case. Let's give it a weight. So we'll say that the weight is six kilograms. And then let's give it a size. So the size, we can always go back and change the sizes. I'm going to actually set it up so that it matches the video from previous. So I'm going to go 300, 450, and then 200 for our size of our box. Now if you want to add a decal to the top, we can go to image and we can bring in an image and we can place it on either side of the box. So I'm going to place it on the top here. So I'm going to Z plus because Z is going up. Let's go to the folder and then I'm going to put my box top and I'm going to hit apply. And then now we have our box if you want to do a rotation on it. So I can go say left, hit apply. And now we have an image on top of our box and this can be anything from a bitmap a png or a jpeg image so you can add like a little postage to the side if you wanted to or your company logo onto the top or side to make it a little bit more flashy so now that we have our part one now we can start setting up our rail system so that we have our box moving down the conveyor belt so if we have an object over here and we don't want to recreate it on our conveyor belt because we can't physically move a actual part. We need to move another container that will house our part. So you'll see what I mean in a minute once we get this set up. So if you don't want to reset up this object or if you don't want to create the size or if you forget the size, you can actually export this. So if you go to say box one here, right click, export as an object and then inside your work cell, you can save this as say box one object and then you can import it as a CAD file so you don't have to recreate this object. So I'm going to go to the conveyor belt now. And if you remember, we created conveyor belt under machines. If we hit the plus next to machines, you'll see machine number one. If you want to add the name of conveyor on here so we know what machine one is, you can easily do that. Side here, and we can put in conveyor belt. So now we have it named. So let's right click on that. And we're going to go add link. 
and we're going to go to this and we can go CAD library or we can go CAD file since we exported that box let's go to actual CAD file or we can go down to the box and create our own box so let's go CAD file and then you'll see it brings us into our exports or if it doesn't bring you into this all you have to do is locate where your export is box number one open and now we have our actual box so in the general here here's link number one you have a CAD link but the big part about this if you notice where it says link one it says motion and inside motion this is how we actually move it so let's move this so it's on top of the conveyor belt so we go over to linked CAD and then here's where we place in these sizes so let's figure out where we need to go with this And then let's bring it in where it's going to start. So here's the starting point. So we'll go 150. And let's look at the front view so we can see, make sure it's on the actual conveyor belt. One ninety five. There we go. So now we have the starting portion of our box. Next, let's go to motion. So inside motion, we're going to do a device in and out controlled. So right now it says servo motor. Let's go to device in and out. And we are going to do a linear motion. And then here's the speed. So here's the forward and backward. So, and what we're going to do is we're going to add some inputs and outputs. So when we get to the end here, we need to send out a digital output to the robot to say that, hey, I am in place. So let's set these up. We're going to do first we're going to do the output device. So the first output device is going to be our controller and it's going to be digital one. And then when it's on, we're going to be at this location. So this location was 150 millimeters in the X direction. Then we're going to go, when we go to the other side, robot controller number one, when digital one is off, we're going to be on the other side. So let's take a guess here and then we'll figure out whether we are right or not so let's say 1500 and we can always test it so let's go down here and test and you'll notice that actually it's going in the wrong direction because right now it's going in the Z direction so let's fix that so let's go to general and right here where it says the axis origin if you click this you'll notice that there's actually a motor that is going to be not visible unless you specify that you want it to be visible we're not going to make it visible otherwise it moves with your object sometimes so we're going to go down the x-axis apply now we are going the correct direction so notice how the motor is now pointing in the x direction and we are also pushing our box down the way so let's go back to motion and let's see what 2000 looks like so that will be pretty much at the end of our conveyor belt so we'll say 2000 is going to be our number then what we need to do is we need to tell the robot when it's in place. So that's going to be the outputs, which is going to go to the input of our actual robot. So let's go down here. We're going to go to our robot controller number one. And our IO tag is going to be, we'll say, digital one. And then our when we're back at our device, we're going to be at digital two. So when both of these are on, we'll say this location is going to be the back side, which is going to be 150. And then this is going to be our front side, which is going to be that 1000. We should have two outputs, two inputs for our device. One being utilized only on one digital output uh, because we could do an on and off. So that's turning the conveyor belt on until it gets to 2000. And then as soon as it gets to 2000, it stops and it sends a digital output and goes into the digital input of our actual teach pendant or our robot saying that, hey, we are in position. Let's pick me up. Let's test to make sure these are in correct location so we can test. So that's 150 and then here and then 2000 back there. OK, so let's change the speed of this now. And let's set these to be a little bit faster. So we'll say at the same speed as the robot, so 250, 250. And we'll probably change this uh, once we actually set up the cell. So now that we have these set up, we can hit OK. And let's run an actual simulation. So we're going to go into Teach, and we're going to add Simulation Program. And then we're going to create something called a Conveyor Program. 
let's move this over and then let's bring up our link one which gives us the information so the first thing we want to do is make sure that our box is on the left hand side which is location 150 so digital output number one needs to be on so let's go instruction digital output number one on so that means it's going to move to the left until it hits 150. As soon as we hit 150, we want to turn on digital output number one, representing we are in position. So we're going to wait until that happens. So it's going to wait until this continuously moves. So let's go to wait until digital one on. So digital one is good. So once we are at that point, let's just wait a half second or so. And now we're going to move our box down the correct direction of the conveyor belt. So we're going to do digital output number one off. So let's go instruction. Digital number one off. So now we're moving to the right until we hit location. But as soon as we hit location under, we want to send out a signal saying that we are at that position. So we're going to do a wait command. Wait until we are at digital input number two is on. Close out of this and let's try this out. So it's now going to move back to that position. And we're going to probably have to speed this up, but right now we're just getting it set. As soon as we're at that position, now it's moving down the conveyor belt. So it seems like 250 seems to be pretty good for speed. We may kick that up just a hair bit. And as soon as we're there, we send out a digital output to the digital in of our robot saying that we are in place. So we want to make sure that we're not going back with the box. So we're going to make it look like it's instantaneously jumping back to this position. So let's pull up the link again. And then here's the speed. Right now we have it both at 250. So let's change this to a higher number to see which direction we need to go. So let's say 900. Apply. And then let's run this again to see what it looks like. So 250, it looks like it's going the same speed this way. So let's see if that 900 is actually going this way. Yep, so 900 is, we need to flip the two. So right here, let's go this to 250, and then let's change this to as fast as we can. So let's say 100,000. Hit apply. And then let's try this, and it should instantaneously jump over to this area right here. There we go. And then it goes. So it looks like it's disappearing and reappearing at the end. So there's really no way of destroying your object once it gets to the end or once it gets placed up. We just need it to pretty much transport from one side to the other and we do that by kicking up the speed to an ungodly amount. So now that we have our placement, let's just run this one more time just to see. There we go, moving down. Our conveyor belt. And we can continuously loop this, and that's the last thing we'll do in this video. In the next video, we'll actually pick up our object and move it to the next place. But first, let's do a jump label here, and then let's add an instruction of label number one. So it's going to continuously do this over and over again until we hit That's moving an object down a simple straight conveyor belt.